A good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Tenodis to Humor, and welcome to this special Games Guard edition of Medieval 2 Total War, where today we look at how you can play as the Temurids. Yes, the Temurids, that greatest of all the Mongol successor states, and really an equally terrifying force to the west. Now, Tim of the Lame, or Timurlane, as he's often known, was one of the great destructive generals of history. Indeed, 7 to 20 million people were estimated to be killed under his rule. That would be 5% of the world population at the time. Truly a destructive force. The Timurids make an intriguing faction. And one today that I'd like to give a bit of love to, because I don't think they're as well known as they really should be. With an empire stretching from Anatolia all the way down into India, they are truly one of the intriguing factions of all of world history. So we're going to show them some love today and I'm going to show you how you can play your own campaign as the Timurids and Great Tamerlane. Now just as the Mongols are supposed to be a mid-game crisis, the Timurids act as a late-game crisis following it on from the devastation of the Black Death and obviously they come along much like the Mongols with huge hordes ready to smash you all up. Now because they're a late game crisis unless you're playing a full length campaign all the way to the end like this Ribble game here you won't actually get to see them too often but they have a very similar effect to the Mongols albeit they often actually do kind of wipe the Mongols out. Now obviously historically they were a sort of successor kingdom albeit Tim of the Lame wasn't actually a direct descendant of Genghis Khan. Nonetheless he did come out of the Chagati Khanate one of the kind of four main successor kingdoms. Now, in terms of the game, you will find that they cause a lot of chaos. So if we go swing into battle with them, we'll see that they have some ridiculous forces. Much like you expect with the Mongols, they have all sorts of extra equipment, they have gunpowder units you haven't seen thus far, and they also have the madness of the elephants. So this should be a really fun faction to play as I'm really looking forward to playing as the Timurids, and actually they seem to have a more interesting roster than the Mongols do. They have a bit more variation, a few of the Turkic units as well, and some lovely Halbred militia too. So I think they're going to be a pretty fun set of guys to play as. So I'll tell you what, we'll get into the game files and I'll show you how you can play this most marvellous of little factions. Once inside the game files, we as ever need to go straight into data, into world, maps, campaign, imperial campaign, and to this lovely file here, desk underscore strat. As ever, this is normally the place to start. Once inside the desk underscore strat file then, we are going to take the Tamurids from the non-playable section and simply paste them up into playable. As ever, always the first step for us now, we are going to use Control F for find, always a useful tool, and get to the Tamurids now. Actually, they don't really have very much information because they are event triggered later in the game. So to sort that out, we are first of all going to get rid of the Dead Until Resurrected line. And if you like, you can change the Denari and the King's Purse. I'm just going to change it down to 4,000 and this down to 1,000. The next thing we need to do then is to get ourselves a city. So Baghdad is my chosen settlement. I'm going to find that and simply cut and paste that out of the rebel section, leaving the one space gap there and heading back up to the Timurids where I can simply paste them in underneath the purse there. So just make sure you get your spacing correct. You can of course change the population and add buildings or take them away if that's what you want to do, but I think I'm quite happy leaving it as it is. The other obvious thing I'm lacking is a faction leader. So we are going to steal the Turks leader. So if I just head up to Turks, this happens to be him here. He is the leader of the faction. So I'm going to go and take all of his men there. Just copy them. I want to leave him in the game, of course. And I'm just going to head back down to us. And I can paste him in. Indeed, if you're not sure about the space, you can always check, again, as I've said, the other factions. So if you want to go scroll up to, or down towards the next guys, you are welcome to do that. I'm going to paste this underneath should be one space there and two at the end. So that will obviously now give us this guy as our faction leader. The most important thing for us to change is the coordinates here. At the moment, this lad is going to spawn right on top of the Turkish faction leader because of course we haven't changed any details yet. So to do that, I need to know what units are actually in Baghdad province because they'll have some coordinates attached to them. Now they have two Arab cavalry, 
two desert archers and two town militia. I did this simply, I, I checked that by loading up the game as the rebels and checking of course. Now it happens that the first thing that I find happens to be that very set of units and we simply want to take those coordinates and then delete the army. We don't actually want them to exist. Just make sure you actually don't get rid of the actual coordinates before you delete them. That would be rather unfortunate for you. So we are going to replace our dear leader's coordinates with those ones. And that means he'll now appear wherever he wanted to. If we load up the campaign map then, you will find the Temerids will now load. The only real problem we have is that the faction leader currently has no name. We can go and sort that out momentarily. We also have some units which aren't actually of this faction. Now they have actually loaded, unlike with the Mongols, he seems to have slightly less bugs than that. However, I would like to have some slightly more traditionally Temerid troops for this. So what I'm going to do is head back into the game files and we'll see if we can fix a few of these little problems. In order to find Tamirid units, we need to head out of Disk underscore Strat, back into the same general folder in Pure Campaign, where we instead want to head into Campaign underscore Script. This bit has the script in for both the Mongol and Tamirid invasions, which also lists the armies that will appear for those events. So of course we can go and take some of the units from in there. Once inside then, you'll see a lot of the early things are to do with the Mongol invasions. So we need to scroll through them and head down to the Timurid invasions. Now once we get to those, we can obviously take a few units if that is indeed what you'd like to do. So Timurid invasion one script is down here and you can see that these are some of their units. Now bear in mind, they share quite a lot of units with the Mongols in part because they are to some extent a kind of successor state of the Mongol Empire. So the game has obviously saved the assets by using the Mongol assets once more. So what I want to do is take some of these units. So I'll just take this whole chunk for now. I'm not gonna take the elephants. You can of course take the elephants, that could be good fun. I'll take these lads to start with, maybe up to the Sabadar lads. And from there, I'm gonna copy and paste them back into the desk underscore strat file. Back inside the other file, we are simply going to overwrite the units that were already there. So I paste those in, you will find sometimes that it does a little bit of odd formatting. So it doesn't matter too much, because I'm actually gonna get rid of most of these units anyway. So I'll probably do is keep one of these heavy archers, one of the heavy lancers, and maybe keep a couple of these Sabadar militias. Again, this is kind of down to your own choice, really, what units you want to start with. I just want a few basic units to start the game off. It's worth bearing in mind, of course, that these guys do start with six experience. I'm gonna change these over to one. But of course, you can fiddle around with this all you like. Um, you know, obviously, when I was a kid playing Rome Total War, I, I naturally went onto the duty. I gave them all nine experience, three armor, three weapon, and ran around for half an hour. It's funny for a little while. But I think most of the time, it's more fun when you kind of make it a nice, even playing battlefield. So I'm going to put those down to one experience. And obviously, the same goes for the faction leader over here. You can change these traits, remove them, add more. Obviously, the more you change, the more it likely it is you've made a tiny mistake and then you won't get things to work. I'm quite happy leaving it as it is. But if you want to, you can scroll through some of the other characters on this document here. and You can change it around if that's what you want to do. In order to change the character name, however, we need to head into a different section altogether. So further into the files is data. I want to head back into that folder. And inside here, you'll find the Deska underscore name file. Went into this last time too, of course. And inside here, we'll find the list of names that we can use for the Tamirid lad. In here, we start off with the Italian and Papal State names. We obviously want to head straight down to the Timurids. We can pick whichever name we think is nice and suitable. So there are all sorts of names here. Any of these will work quite nicely. We could, of course, be Timur if that's what we indeed want to do. I don't know. Let's go with... Oh, Jaka. Let's be Jaka. Let's copy that name and we're going to paste that back in place on the other document. Back inside the desk underscore strat then, we are simply going to take the original name and we're going to paste in the one that we have taken from the other file there. And that will now mean that that should translate into the game. If we've reopened the game then, we'll now find that we have Khan Jaka over here who naturally has got those traits and retinue that we set him before. It was got the units that we set. 
So we've got ourselves a couple of Subadar Militia and the Mongol Heavy Lancers. I realise I actually deleted the uh, the Heavy Archers from my list. That's no trouble. I can always add them back in later. But you can see how we've managed to now fiddle around with our units. There is no problem in terms of construction for the Timrids. They are obviously able to construct quite a lot in this fairly decent size settlement. So you can obviously choose if you want to add a little bit more or not. One thing I will say though, that it looks a little bit like the map's a bit broken here and unloaded because it looks like that background colour isn't really changing. It is just the particular colour of this faction though. So the bits that you can see clearly are in the dark black there and the bits that you're not able to currently see are just in a very strange light pale colour. So um, yeah, just to say there isn't actually a problem here. I thought this was a bug at first, but it isn't. It's just the colour scheme of the faction. Now, before you get straight into the game, there's obviously one more thing to consider, which is the massive invasions of the hordes. At the moment, we haven't changed any of that information. So currently, there'll be a Mongol horde that will turn up, and there'll also be a Temerid horde, which will just turn up and join your forces. Honestly, if I were playing this, I'd probably leave both of them in. It'll be a little bit of fun. Um, now, if you do, however, want to remove them, we'll go back into the files now and I'll show you how you can do that. If we go back inside the campaign underscore script text file, then we can obviously see here the Mongol invasions are floating around. Now, it is as simple as deleting this section out of the game if you don't want the Mongols to turn up. Naturally, if you are playing as the Timurids, then the Mongol invasion might well be a little bit inconvenient for you. So if you wanted to get rid of that, you can, of course, do that. You just need to be careful you don't take out too much and make the game a little bit confused. As ever, you want to have backup of anything that you take out of the game. And indeed, if I don't want the Temurid invasion to come either, I simply will scroll down and remove all of this as well. Now, as I said, personally, I like to play with it. I just think it's kind of fun for your own huge army to turn up towards the end. And to be honest, you're probably fine with the Temerids. You've won the game by the point that that happens. So we can delete that if we like, and then the game will still run just without those two horde invasions. The last thing we need to change then is the little problem here, zero upkeep. A lot of the Timurid and Mongol units naturally have zero upkeep. I suppose it's part of making the Horde factions particularly powerful and making sure they have lots of money to go and steamroll everybody. But yes, of course, if you want to play a bit more balanced game, you're naturally going to want to just make those upkeeps a little bit more realistic. Eagle-eyed amongst you would have noticed that this unit here actually already had 220 as its upkeep and that's because in the previous video when I looked at the Mongols I already edited this particular unit. So what we'll do is when we head in the game files I'll have a fresh version of the file and I'll be able to show you how you can go through and change all those units. Once inside the document then you'll want to search for the Timurids and that will take you down to Turkish Horse Archers which are one of the units that the Timurids can actually have access to. Now you can find that out on any of these unit lists by looking at ownership here. So obviously Turks and Timurids are the two factions that can use them. Now because it is a Turkish unit as well as a Timurid unit, this number here, the upkeep, already has a figure. It's not zero. So we just need to make sure that any units which are Timurid or Mongol will actually have an upkeep cost because those are the ones that we're going to need to change. So what I'm going to do is systematically go through them. So I keep going down, I will find every time Timurids come up. So this time it's the Turkomans. Again, another unit used by the Timurids and the Turks, also by the slave rebel faction. Again, 150 on the upkeep cost. If you're a little bit stuck by all these numbers and they can be a little bit daunting, there is a really good and clear explanation at the top of this file. So if you do have a good look through this, you'll have a good idea what all of these numbers refer to. See here, stat cost, the third one is cost of upkeep. So that's how I know what I'm indeed looking for. So if we keep going down, we'll eventually find a unit which isn't one that is shared by another unit. So ah, here we go, the elephants. The elephants have an upkeep of zero, which is kind of ludicrous because they are absolutely demonstrative. So I'm gonna give them a thousand. That actually might be massively undercooking it, but of course, zero is completely ludicrous. So that unit is one which only the Timurids own, and we're going to have to actually fill that in. So we will continue to do this to go and fill this out throughout this document. Again, the elephant artillery has zero there. I'm going to give them 1,000. 
and continue going down this little document. So our unpronounceable mercenaries here, they will of course have an upkeep cost of 300 because they're available to lots of other factions. So your job here is one to just systematically go through this list and change the upkeep of any units which currently have zero and the ownership of the Timurids. So from a roleplay point of view then, where do we stand with the Timurids? Well, realistically most of the empire of course lies to the east. Timur himself was from Transoxania, an area just to the southeast of the Aral Sea, the next sea along to the east from the Caspian here, very much in the Central Asian Plains. Now that was really all part of the Chagati Khanate, one of the four successor kingdoms to the Mongols, and really after assuming control of that he headed west into the very fractured Persian lands of the Ilkhanate. Now they were all broken up, he managed to smash through them, pick them off one by one, and he found himself in Baghdad in the 1390s, hence I chose this as my starting city. Kind of that it's uh, a bit unhappy here. He, um, he didn't see very uh, kindly to rebellions, and he'd very much squash them and execute pretty much everyone in his way if they decided to rebel. He generally actually was quite nice to people and let those, uh, if they decided to give up the city to him, he'd let them carry on running most of the time, but if they showed any resistance they were brutally, brutally crushed. So um, yeah, that is pretty much how we get ourselves to this starter position over here. The Timurid Empire was never really governed quite like the Mongol Empire. Genghis Khan had always had a big idea of civil service and a way to run everything. But Timur didn't quite have the same level of governance within his empire. And it was very much a one-man empire which would fall apart upon his death on route to China in 1405. However, we can still see here a good selection of the lands that he would take during his time pushing westward. Now obviously he spent some time in India as well, people know a little bit about that and obviously we have our lovely elephant units, um, of which by the way when he went to India and faced elephant units he, he used a magnificent tactic which for some reason they didn't put in the game here, which was to scare off the, the elephants. He used camels with big packs of flaming straw on their back to uh, cause chaos and apparently it did the job and they went and sacked Delhi. And um, yes, I, I, it's a bit of a shame they didn't put that into the game there, but oh well, we're going to really focus on his western escapades. So the territories we can see here does give us a representation of the key western territories that Timur conquered. Of course it isn't quite as simple as that. He, he led a lot of raids and obviously some land kind of flitted one way and the other through time. Places like Aleppo and Damascus were both sacked brutally to try and keep the Egyptians, or the Mamluks really, and the Turks from allying together against them. I guess by kind of splitting them up he made sure that he could keep them apart and prevent an annoying alliance. Nonetheless they were at war with both of these two significant powers and that would kind of see uh, as kind of a borderline, not quite a border in the way we think of it now, but certainly a kind of furthest extent for Timur and his western conquests. Conflict between the Turks and the Timurids was pretty much inevitable, especially when the really worthy letters didn't really have any diplomatic effect, apart from annoying each other of course. So they came to blows in the early 15th century. Now at this point the Turks were a quite powerful little empire, but they haven't become the Ottomans as we know them yet. Constantinople was still not quite taken, the Byzantines were just about holding them out. In fact it was under siege when Bayezid the uh, Sultan of the Ottomans decided to go swing east and deal with Timur and they came to blows at the Battle of Ankara in 1402. Heavy losses on both sides, a really catastrophic and huge battle, although big shout out to Stefan Lazarevich, the Serbian vassal, he fought magnificently by all accounts in this battle and seemed to just cause absolute wonders, probably possibly saving actually the future of the Ottoman Empire here because in many ways he allowed the successor of Bayezid who was captured in the battle to get away. And yeah, it's really one of those interesting what ifs of history because the Ottomans could have crumbled at this point. This could have been the end for them. Luckily for them, although Timur actually captured Bayezid in the battle and he would die in captivity three months later, he didn't live much longer himself, only about three more years. So really we could have seen the Ottomans who, let's remember, until World War I, 500 years later, would continue to be a powerful, powerful presence in this part of the world. They might not have ever really created that power base without capturing Constantinople and without actually losing all of their Anatolian homelands. So it's an intriguing what if, if Timur had lasted a bit longer. And I suppose that's what we want to play with here, ladies and gentlemen. This is your chance to be 
the Timurids. Now, in a way, it's a bit weird because we're going to the Mongol invasions. We're very early here. It is, of course, even at this point, this is around the time the Mongols turn up, actually, 1214. Um, and even at this point, we are about 200 years too early. But of course, we can have some good fun playing as the Timurids and smashing through everybody. And really, that's what we're looking to do here. So this gives you a little bit of an idea of historically where we got with the Timurids. But of course, this is your own role play. You can play it however you like. That is all for today then, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you've enjoyed this little guide of how to play as the Temerids. And indeed, this will be a brand new series as well, starting on Monday. I'll be playing as the Temerids with a particularly interesting little setup, actually. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a load of record settlements and bolster up the factions that already exist to make life a little bit more tricky and also to ramp up the early wars. It should be interesting to see what difference all that makes. So I'm going to a little bit of a fiddle with the game files before we start that series. I'll explain all in the first episode on Monday. I'm very much looking forward to that. It should be rather fun. We're going to get these elephants out eventually. It's going to be magnificent. Bring the elephants back to the new world, ladies and gents. But anyway, I will leave you for now. There'll be a couple little um, videos in the description below the little video to help you with Medieval 2 game files if you have any problems with this and also a link to the new series when that comes out on Monday. Uh, anyway, for now I will leave you ladies and gentlemen, I'm Thomas, this is Tenez the Human and this has been the guide to playing as the Timurids in Medieval 2 Total War. Thank you and bye bye Shoot the flames of death into their eyes. Oh no, we're gonna die! Coward, 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 coward. Stop, sir! You're supposed to die! Run away, run away, run away, run away, run away! Our ballistas can actually shoot our own gates! Okay, let's get on with this battle. Run away!